Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Last week I did a video demonstrating some of the new features found in Photoshop. One of those new features is still in beta. It's called Generative Upscale. In that video, I really just gave you a glimpse of Generative Upscale. In today's video, I want to cover it in a bit more detail. Now, as you can see, I have the beta version of Photoshop open. I am going to open an absolute horrible image into Photoshop. The reason why I'm using a horrible image is because I want to show you how you could rescue a horrible image using Photoshop and use generative upscale to upscale it. So I'm going to open up an image on my desktop. I have a Nikon RAW file and because it is a RAW file, it will open up into Adobe Camera Raw. And as you can see, it's pretty bad. I was actually out right before the sun rose and I wasn't expecting to see a green heron on a branch and I kind of came around the corner and there it was and I just pulled my camera off and took about three different shots and then the green heron took off. Unfortunately I did not have my camera on auto ISO because I wasn't expecting to see anything yet and as you could see it is very much underexposed. So first let's fix this image then I'm going to crop it and then I'm going to use generative upscale to upscale it. And there is a beta limitation in generative upscale that we'll talk about as well. So because it's like underexposed greatly, I'm going to do what I always do when I have an image that is underexposed. And I've done videos on this in the past, and I actually do have it in my Lightroom training. I think I might even have it in my Photoshop training that's available on my website. What I do when I have an image that is severely underexposed is I automatically take Highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up. I just do that automatically. Then I go to exposure, and because it's underexposed, I'll move the exposure slider to the right. Conversely, if this image was overexposed, I still would take highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up, and then I take exposure to the left. I pull exposure down. Well, in this case, I need to push it to the right. So what I do is I just eyeball the image, and I just keep moving it to the right until it appears like I have a properly exposed image, and I think right about there is good. Next, I'll get a white and black point the way I typically do. That is, I'll hold in the Option Camera Mac Alt Canna PC, click on the whites slider. I'll get an entirely black screen, move this to the right. Until I see some color come through, that means I'm starting to blow out the highlights in those areas. And I'll back it off until all that color dissipates right about there. Do the same thing for the blacks slider. I'll hold in that Alt Option key, click on the blacks slider. I'll get an almost entirely white screen. Move this to the left until I see some color come through. That means I'm starting to crush the shadows in those areas. And I usually don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit. So that looks good. Now, zooming in, if I hold in the Command key on my Mac, or it's Control key on a PC and just draw out a rectangle, you could see that there is a considerable amount of noise because this image was so severely underexposed. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, do some noise reduction. So to do that, I'm going to go to detail. I'm going to click on denoise and it will go through its routine to reduce the noise in the image. And while it's doing that, I do have a favor to ask. If you value my content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and remember to click that little bell so that you get notifications of when I post new videos. Also in the description below this uh, video. I'll have a link to my website. I have a lot of free things on Photoshop and I have some paid courses as well that you could check out. So as you can see, it's almost done. As a matter of fact, it is done. So again, I'm going to zoom in by holding the command key on my Mac. Zoom in. There's still a little noise there. So I'm going to tweak up the noise and put it up maybe to 75. And actually that looks perfect. So that looks pretty good. Actually, I like what I've done in Camera Raw. So now I'm going to open this image up to, into Photoshop by going to Open. Now, once it's in Photoshop, I'm going to crop it because, as I mentioned, I did not frame this image well at all. So I'm going to get the Crop Tool. The keyboard shortcut for the Crop Tool is the C key. And I think I want to crop it to a 4x5. And I do want it vertical the way it is. If I wanted to switch it, I could click on these two little arrows and that will flip flop the crop. So I'm going to bring it way down. So I'm cropping it quite a bit. This is where generative upscale will come in. So I think we'll even crop it maybe just a touch more, maybe try to get away with it. 
All right, so right about there, I have this rule of thirds crossover point just about on the heron's eye, and I'm going to click the little check mark. I am going to make sure that I'm deleting crop pixels because I don't need all these pixels. So I'm going to get rid of them and delete it. All right, now we have a really small image. I'm going to hit Command-0 on my Mac to fit it to screen. If I go up to Image and I go down to Image Size, you'll notice that it's 1,200 by 1,500. If I wanted to print this, I would not be able to get a high-quality larger print from it because it is such low resolution. This is where generative upscale comes in. So to upscale this image, what I will do is I will go up to Image, Generative Upscale. Then you see you'll have a drop-down for the scale. Uh, it's on 2x. That means it will give me a 2400 by 3000 pixel image. Now, granted, that still isn't very large. If I wanted to get a very large print from this, I still wouldn't be able to because it's too small. You can go bigger. Unfortunately, one of the limitations of generative upscale in beta is that it limits, it limits you to something like 8 megapixels. So if I go to, say, even 3x, you'll see that output too large in beta width or height exceeds 4096 pixels. So the, the long edge basically is longer than 4096. And so because you can see the long edge is going there, 4,500. And we'll do the same thing at 4X as well, of course. So we're stuck right now while it's in beta to do 2X. But, you know, still when this comes out of beta, I'm sure they'll have this so you can make it a lot larger. So we'll do that and we'll click upscale. Now the cool thing, in my mind at least, of what it does, it actually will open a new tab and it will have the upscaled image in the new tab. So we still have this image that we've done our work on in the in the first tab. Let me get rid of the, that tool. And you can see that if I go back, here's our original image that I worked on in Camera Raw, brought over into Photoshop, and did the thing. Now, if we go to the 2x upscale image, you can see that it's a lot larger. I'll fit it to screen. I get a Command-0 on my Mac, Control-0 on a PC. But now it's upscaled. If I go up to Image and then down to Image Size, you can see that it's now as it said it would be, 2,400 by 3,000. And it's very easy to use, and I did want to show you how to use it on an image that was really bad and how I could rescue this image in Photoshop. So uh, when this uh, feature is in the current version of Photoshop, I will do a video on it then to show how you could upscale it to even larger sizes. And I should add, by the way, if you look over at the layers panel, you'll see that it comes, the upscale comes with a mask. So if you had something at the upscale, maybe put an artifact in there or something like that, and the original image underneath doesn't have an artifact, you could use the mask to paint on the mask in black to get rid of the artifact. But you could see how upscale improved the background because there's the original image and here's the upscaled image original image, upscaled image. So I think it improved the background considerably. So there is generative upscale in Photoshop. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.